Every day, George is making huge strides, but in every area where he shows progress, there's another area that still needs a lot of work. Uh-uh, too much. I'm Zach George, and this is George. No relations. George has spent the last four months living in an animal shelter with minimal contact with other dogs or people. And it's my job to transform him from a wild and crazy dog to an incredible pet. Seems straightforward, right? Uh -uh. Holy cow, not getting that ball. George is a dog like I've never known before. I don't know if I can let this dog go. Let go. Yes, he did it. This might be the single greatest transformation I have ever seen in a dog that I've worked with. The hardest thing about fostering a dog, you would fall in love with them. This is reality dog training. Subscribe and click the bell so you never miss an episode. At this point, it should be obvious that George really likes great toys and great treats. So the biggest question is, is your dog a BarkBox dog or a Super Chewer dog? Whatever they are, Bark will send you a box each month that your dog is going to be obsessed with. Super Chewer is for dogs that are really tough on toys, like George, for example. This is a beef-scented seagull. I'm sure it makes sense to dogs. If your dog does manage to get this covering off, they actually have toys inside of them too. Look at that, it's a sand castle. By the way, this is a squeaker. Ah, I can't even squeak it, I have to step on it to squeak it. This one's a little bit easier, but still very tough. Then you have a forever ball. Let go. Perfect, can you teach George how to do that? And BarkBox is for dogs that take a little bit better care of their toys. If I know BarkBox, these are gonna come off. Told you. What a great game, because your dog can learn to pull them off the stick here. Even the plush toys have varying textures, which really matter. A little raccoon that they can pull out. She's gonna love that. Look at the tail. And with both these boxes, you get really high quality treats and shoes. It's great to replenish your treat supply without you having to go anywhere. And guess what? You can get a free BarkBox Super Chewer box, or even both, when you sign up for a multi-month plan at BarkBox.com slash dog training and SuperChewer.com slash dog training. Those links will be below. Another morning, George slept perfectly overnight for the first time without me being present, so he did awesome. Our plans for today are basically uh, to do some planning, kind of figure out how we want to proceed forward with George and his training program. I'm going to be working off camera, though I'll probably show you most of that anyway, because there really is no off camera. But as you can see, the dogs are having a great time this morning playing with each other. They really enjoy waking up like this together. And I'm hoping to let them get a lot of play time in today. It's gonna to be a little warmer today, so I'm hoping to get a lot of this play time earlier in the day. When training your dog, you really wanna consider weather and trying to optimize your outdoor training for the weather. You don't wanna train in too much heat, especially here in the South, it can get quite warm. Oh, uh-uh, too much. When their play gets a little too rough, there's no harm in intervening. George is very responsive to that. But he's toughening up inertia too. Uh -uh. Don't nip. We don't nip. Sit. Stay. That's too much. We don't do that. Dogs playing rough can be perfectly natural. However, to help them more quickly understand what's too rough and what isn't, it can be helpful to intervene and give them a few seconds or a few minutes to calm down before resuming. Intervening like that doesn't just teach George what's appropriate and what isn't. It has also helped Inertia to see that she can look to me to step in if she ever feels like she needs help. He's crazy, huh? He's crazy. Crazy man. Today's a little different because Bree has to do some off-camera production work, so we don't have our camera operator. So I decided to set up a tripod so I could still show you what I'm working on with George. Yes, and so there, that's exactly what I'm after. So here I'm working on rewarding George for being in the heel position right by my side, for following that lure, which really helps me show him the exact position I want, and for moving with me a little bit forwards and even backwards. Let's try a sit pretty. Sit. Yes, that sit pretty starting to look good. I told you the muscle memory on that one takes a minute. Yes, 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 good. The longer he's holding that position, the faster I'm giving him the treats just to let him know that's working. A great example of how you can use your dog's meal to really train them either new things or maintain things that you're trying to keep. You have gotta admit, he is one of the most special dogs we have ever featured on this channel. 
I want to test now and see if he prefers to do his training with a toy. Use what your dog likes. He likes play, he likes food. We can use that to train him all kinds of things. Yes! So he's making an effort there. So I'm gonna give him some tug. Come on, here, come on, let's go this way. Here, let's go. Yes, that's it. He's like, wait a minute, we're doing that thing again for this? That's weird. Good, here, good boy, here. This way, come on, you're doing good, easy. Good boy. This way, come on, come on. I'm gonna get a little bit more, and then I'm gonna jackpot him with this thing. Come on, let's go, come on. Yes, good, there we go. Really give him a nice 15, 20 second tug session for that one. He's clearly enjoying working for toys. So, let's try his Frisbee, go. Nice, good, good boy. Let go. Come around, doing very well with Letko with the Frisbee. Good. Letko, straight to my hand there, I love that. Go. We have to use tug as a throttle sometimes to bring up our dog's drive or resist using tug to bring down their drive if they're like a little too crazy. Here, I want him a little peppier about charging after that Frisbee. Good boy, get it, come on now, get it. All right, let go. Easy, nope, okay, fine. Come around, ready, go. There you go, he went a little faster that time maybe. I'm hoping to work on George today with something we call multiples in the world of dog frisbee. That's where they catch them in rapid succession. Basically, the goal would be to get them to catch one there, catch it, catch it, catch it, like that quickly. It's a fine line here, because on one hand, I want him extremely excited. On the other hand, he's gonna have to quickly abandon one frisbee to catch the next. Yes, good, let go, yes, good. I mean, that right there is his first flawless multiple segment for basically a first attempt. That was pretty amazing. Let go. Here, yes, let go. Hey, here, yes, let go. Yes. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exciting, you guys. Gonna give him a good tug there, he earned it. He loves that. But, fine line, remember. Let go. Yes, stay. Okay, let go. Yes, let go. Yes, let go. Yes. Nice job, all right, good boy. Good. Nice tug there. <laughs> Whew, I need a break after that one. That was good. One of the very selfish reasons that I'm trying to teach him these multiples, these rapid catch and let goes, because I think he has a shot at being the first dog I've worked with in over 15 years that can catch a double disc throw. I think he has what it takes, but that stuff doesn't usually come quickly. It's just, he's really excelling at Frisbee, so I wanna give him a chance at it, because it's a money move, I'm telling you. It's a good one. Go. Wow. That was much closer than I expected. So rather than just throw that over and over, let me do it like this. Yes, good, I'll take it. I'm looking for his like eyes to commit to it and then that's when I'm throwing it, just to get him used to that rhythm. So that's what George and I did all day on our day off. And now we have our camera operator back. So I've got some big plans for George today. The day before yesterday, we took George into a pretty crowded place for the very first time. He did okay, but he still definitely needs some work. George. George. Yesterday, however, we took an off day from the production, but I still continued to work with George and he was blowing my mind at every turn. So I'm hoping to take some of the success that we had yesterday and I hope to replicate it here in this medium distraction environment. But one thing I know is that there are definitely birds here. So yeah. And George has made it clear that he is interested in birds of all sizes. George and I are gonna work on his general training today, but again, the big variable change is a new environment that he's never been to before. Let's give him his quick test, see how he does over here, just on his basics. Very good. New to sit, he knew what I was gonna go for. I'm just using his breakfast right now. Stay. Yes. Okay. Look at me. Yes, good boy. Lie down has been a little challenging on grass surfaces. Yes, there we go, not today. 
Yes, not released him from this down yet. Yes. Okay, good boy. Now he can get up from the down. We had a little bit of a breakthrough on the hand signal not too long ago. Let's see how he's doing there. Yes, good boy. And okay, that was so interesting to watch. Do you see how patient we were with him just then? I gave him the request and he would look to his left, he would look to his right, and he would keep looking back at my hand signal, trying to recall exactly what it was that he was supposed to do there. You could read him really easily in that moment. Sit down, stay from a distance. Okay, his release, all of that looking very good. Have I mentioned this is only day six with him, with a completely untrained dog right out of the shelter? Listen to that car horn going off in the background. That must be very distracting. Here. George, here. The other thing we haven't even talked about, we're right next to Cafe Du Monde here in New Orleans. So they're making beignets back there, which smell amazing right now. And he's able to tune that out and pay attention to me. Yesterday, I started getting him to assume the heel position by spinning into it here. Still probably a little early for this, but I wanna see if he's had any progress here. Come here. See this? Yes. Just rewarding him for turning around. Here. Good, yes, I'll take that. See how he ended up kind of over here? We'll just try to improve that over time, but he's looking good. Yes, very good. Now, did you see that turn? That's how I want it to look. Good boy, he's really whipping them legs around. That's nice. And it's awkward for a dog to use, yes, their back legs, but I'm seeing dramatic improvement in typical George fashion here. Here, yes. Look at me. Yes. I'm trying to keep George aligned to my side in general right now, but in the beginning, you have to make judgment calls about whether to focus on your dog's exact position or their overall focus during heel. Neither answer is wrong, but it's a lot for your dog to learn at once, so definitely remain patient. I'm gonna try the turn. He started to get out of heel, good recovery here. George is still putting together exactly what we want when we ask him to heal, but he's already showing glimmers of the light bulb going off. George? Yes. All right. Asking a little much of him there. It's a little difficult to get his attention right now, just because there's stuff going on in the background. George, here. Yes. Good. Yes, yes. Come on, come on, let's go. This way, George, come on. You're doing good, buddy, keep going. Come on, let's go. Yes, good, all right, not bad. I'm pretty happy with that for today. Now it's about time that we teach George a new trick too. Since he knows down, we can start to build on that. I think every dog should know how to do a rollover. But the problem with him, look at his hips. See how he doesn't readily relax his hips? If they flip one hip under them, it makes it a little bit easier. So here it might be a little tougher with them. This is common with a lot of dogs that are built like this. They really lie down in that sphinx position. Yes! Okay, there we go. That was nice. The lure has been really delicate with him. Like I'm having to lure differently because I'm actually using kibble with him today, but I'm having to lure kind of with a handful of kibble as opposed to between my thumb and index finger. You know what I mean? So that's been something that's been kind of different with him. There we go, there we go. Nice, and see, I've got an open hand lure there, which is really interesting. Good boy, yeah! Dog training is about the nuances, so really catering to your individual dog is key. You wanna go back the other way or not? Yes, good. One thing you don't want to do when teaching play dead or roll over is force them onto their back. That will definitely make it worse in most cases. You really want them going voluntarily. And you've seen when he plays with inertia, he likes to get on his back sometimes, so he's comfortable doing the motion. I like the bow. I'm gonna reward for it even though we're teaching roll over. Yes, bow. Okay, good. Okay. Down. Come on. Yes. And um, let's see how I got the treat a little farther away that time. So that's 
the very beginning of trying to phase out that dramatic lure. So eventually you can be like, hey, roll over and just give them a hand signal or say roll over. So I'm looking for opportunities when I can see he's committed to really pull my hand away so he can get used to doing the behavior or as much of that behavior as possible without the treat being right at his nose. Look at that, look how far away. Yes, roll over. Not too concerned with saying roll over, roll over. He doesn't know what that means. It's more important, okay, <laughs> to get him to go through it. Good job, buddy. We've seen George shake off a couple of times like this. He's still relatively new to wearing a harness and collar. And in this case, I'm guessing that the harness and or traffic handle attached to him moves around as he rolls over and that might be throwing him off a little. That's a nice light rollover training session that plants the seed. I can continue to work on that as well. In fact, you should work on many things in a single training session with a dog like this. George, as smart as he is, will get bored if I just keep training to these basic things. The way to really get him excited about training is to break out a toy. So I'm going to do that next. I mean, you can see it. Look at this. The second Brie handed me the Frisbees. You can see different George. He's very lit up right now. He's very interested in these. Before I get started with my Frisbee session, let's just see how different his heel looks when I use a Frisbee as motivation instead of treats. Ah. You can see how motivated he is to heel for a toy. Yes. Okay. Good boy. Uh, uh, uh. He loves to chew these things like bubble gum. We've really been working on his let go. That's been our nemesis. Sometimes it's great, sometimes it's not so great. It depends on his mood. And so I've decided that one of the best ways to teach him to let go is to get him hopefully excelling at doing multiples. You remember we talked about multiples being where you deliver Frisbees in rapid succession, where your dog has to let go, abandon it, and then catch the next one like that. Doing training like this is really great because it gets your dog in the habit of thinking quick and quickly moving on to the next thing. The goal here is to get him to catch this one, let go, and then catch the other one. We're getting a lot of use out of these Frisbees. Ready? Catch it, let go. Hey, yes. See, right there when he let go, I didn't even say yes and he was looking for it. Let go. Yes. A lot of it is just finding your rhythm here. Yes. Good, come here. George, come on. Here, yes. Good, all right. And again, not concerned with whether or not he catches it here. The fact that he's attempting to catch is everything. So it looks like it started raining. We got some shelter here. So I'm gonna keep up with our training. I'm gonna be pretty conservative given that we're not on grass though. We're on a hard surface. So I always wanna be mindful of the surfaces I'm working on. Here, good, catch it. Good, let go. Yes, George, little distracted up here. Not, not laser focused, come on. Okay, yes. There you go. Right now I can see that his attention is a little thrown off. I mean, it's understandable. We're in a new place, now it's raining. We just relocated from down there to up here. That's a completely different setting for him. But you can kind of see how he's not quite as intense about the Frisbee. So I'm wondering if I should play some tug with him to get him a little amped up and a little more intense about the Frisbee. But then again, that runs the risk of setting let go back as well. George. Good, get it. Good, and there's a nice tug. All right, catch it, let go, catch it, let go, catch it, let go, yes! Okay, there we go. <laughs> Considering he's just now learning how to do multiples, those are looking pretty good. Another thing that I'd like to touch on with George is teaching him to start understanding the concept of listening to me when I'm farther away. Sit, yes. If I go up to George like that and say sit, he's perfect. But if I were to do that from farther away, George, sit. Same signal, holding up a, you know, pretending like I'm holding up a treat. Sit. No, here. Sit. Yes. See how just an inch or two can make a huge difference? Dogs are like, wait, that's not normally what I do when you're that far away. Okay, good. Let's see if we can improve on that. Sit. He's distracted over here by someone doing some park maintenance. So I don't want to ask for too much, but I think he's got it in him to at least sit. Yes. When you're in public training like this and you see they're distracted, it's a good idea a lot of times to just let them check it out. I mean, look at that. You think he's ever seen a vehicle like that? Yes. I'm gonna treat him for holding his sit stay. Good boy. Now he sees a stroller. Good boy. Stay. 
it's really a fine line. I'd like him to pay attention to me no matter what's going on, but at the end of the day, I need to be realistic about the fact that I'm working with a dog who is brand new to training and does not have extensive socialization with the world to my knowledge. So these are the things I have to feel out as I go. I'm gonna hold off on asking for look at me here. I'm gonna see if he does it naturally. Good boy. Uh-uh. Yes, just, I was waiting for him the moment he was gonna give his attention to me. I wanted to go ahead and let him know. I love that. Good boy, George. Nice job. Okay. Yes, I like the stand. Came right up into a stand. Yes. Give me, stay. Here, sit. Yes, isn't that funny? You see that? The slightly different position totally throws dogs off all the time. You have to build it like a centimeter at a time. Sit, that's better, yes, yes. Okay, stand, good, stay. Look at me, sit. No. Sit. Yes. Very good. I gave him a gentle no there to just let him know, essentially, that's not what I'm looking for. And then he thought about it and he went into the sit. I mean, he's showing a lot of potential. It may not look like much, but being able to get another foot or two away from your dog and have them perform a behavior like that is pretty challenging with a lot of dogs. Stay. Look at me. Sit. Yes. Good, okay, good, love it. I'm not gonna just keep drilling and drilling with him today. It's important that we keep training really optimistic and that he has some time to just enjoy this place. So I think we'll go on a free walk right now and let him enjoy the environment, sniff around, not ask him to do much of anything. A free walk is just where you give your dog a very casual walk. You're not asking them to do skills left and right. You're just letting them have some nice meditative time to themselves. Come on, here, good boy. So, you know, I gave him some gentle encouragement there. Good job, sir. So, so far I'm seeing this pattern of pretty heavy pulling when he's on a free walk or a less disciplined walk here. Thank you. Whoa. Pulling dog has its advantages. Stay here, do not jump into the water. There are definitely alligators in there. But going down the stairs, different story, goodness. All right, this isn't exactly what I had in mind for a free walk, George. Right now, since he's pulling so much and the goal is for him to simply experience this new place, I'm gonna pull off to the side so I don't have to deal with pedestrians as much. It's a good thing about working in parks like this. You can get the best of both worlds. If you need to go towards a busy part of the park, you can train there. If you wanna get them in a more secluded part of the park, you can do that. And so this is good. And I'm just gonna kind of keep him moving just so I'm giving him the experience of a walk. We have another dog right over here. So far, he's been pretty good with dogs. He'll look at them, he'll notice them. Occasionally, he'll bark at them. I'd like to keep that behavior of him being decent around dogs maintained for sure. I'm a little surprised right now. I'm pretty much unable to get him to voluntarily pay attention to me. But let me practice come when called. This is when it matters. George, come. Come on. Yes. Good boy. He was distracted by the dog. I was able to get his attention on me, but took a few attempts there. So I wanna work on that too. It's important to remember that our dogs are not machines. No one, no dog, nothing in life is 100%. And so while I stress this is his time for him, we still wanna prove basic things like come and stay periodically in these walks. When you're working with bright animals like dogs, you have to always remember that they're very interested in a variety of things. That's one of the qualities of being smart, being curious about things. Just be understanding of that when working with them. They don't always adhere to our schedule and our desired rate of success. Come on, keep moving. Good boy, that was good. I didn't want him to stall out there. He's really walking quite nicely. So you can see he was really starting off pulling very bad when we got here. And even when we started this particular free walk and now he's walking a lot better, stopping to smell briefly, moving on. Seems to be enjoying himself, quite honestly. And that's the whole point of this walk that primes your dog for all kinds of success in the future too, when they have regular experiences like this. I'd like to give him some desensitizing around birds too. 
Looks like we've got a Canada goose over there just chilling in the water. We can let him explore a bird if he discovers it. Don't pull me towards the water's edge. There are gators in there. I have no doubt you could handle yourself with one though. There we go. He's looking at that flock of seagulls over there. Look at him on one foot ready to sprint after him if he could. Sir. No. Come here. Come on. Zoom in on that and see if that goose is alive. Okay. It's a real goose now. That goose is alive and standing on water. Yes. We are witnessing a miracle right now and you're just acting like it's normal. It's like Jesus goose. Ah, ah. Leave it. What's this? Someone had a crawfish boil here. Hey, leave it. Good boy. Oh, see this? Leave it alone. Only in New Orleans, guys, you come across a crawfish. Leave it. It's okay, I'm vaccinated. Okay, come on, let's go. Yeah, good job. Did you see that real life leave it there? That was really impressive how quickly he's picking that up. You wanna play with your super chewer toy? This is a good way to get some light heel training in with him as well. For him, this is not work. He's like, I don't consider this training, this is fun. That's always the best kind right there. Come on, here, yes, good. I'm trying to reward him before he jumps, ideally. Easier said than done with George. Here, good boy, yes. Good, let go. Yeah, good. <laughs> A little awkward with the leash on here. That's a bit easy. Leave it alone. Here, come on. Easy. So he's really trying to keep pace with me. That's really good. He's staying when I stay. That's the point of heel, that they're really just in tune with you and staying with you. Okay. Easy, come on. Ah, uh, here, come on, nope. Yes, good. Good, and so just getting to chase after that toy is exciting to him. Getting to chomp on it a little bit. Let go. Now, let go. Let go. No, it's not your toy, that's my toy. It's looking better, but he's one of the more challenging dogs I've ever had to teach let go to. You're doing good. Look at that. Yes, ah, boy, I pushed him right to the jump. Should have rewarded a millisecond earlier. That's all right, that's all right. We never know what the next data point on the graph will be. Here, here. Yes, good boy. Let go. Good boy, here, let's try left heel now. You're doing great. You're doing fantastic here. Come on, easy, ah, too far, come on. Let's readjust here. And here's a classic example of me just getting plain greedy since George has been doing so well. But in hindsight, I can tell you I'm definitely not rewarding George enough here. So remember, if your dog is not succeeding a couple of times in a row, take a step back and make things easier for them. So every day we're just seeing more and more progress out of him. This might be the single greatest transformation I have ever seen in a dog that I've worked with. And here we're getting some really good leash walking out of him. Just incorporating play into our training seems to really encourage him to feel more satisfied. Well done. Oh, we have a hoverboard up here. He's been pretty good on stuff like that, but I see him pulling a little bit. I'll hold on to him just for good measure. How you doing? Good. Every day, George is making huge strides, but in every area where he shows progress, there's another area that still needs a lot of work. Nice night out here doing a free walk with the guys, just letting them check things out here. Beautiful night. Sun's going down. I know. George is a little thrown off by the wind. Inertia, come. Boy, what a good man. All right, let's keep with it. Come on. Good job, guys. Love just walking and smelling the ground, checking things out. 
So we're back from our walk now. The dogs did reasonably well together. I did mean, they you were both- on the walk? Oh, just a little bit. Yeah, it was a little tough to do, but I it was okay. I'm interested to find out how you manage that. Good for you. <laughs> Thumbs up for Zach for filming while holding two dogs. I'm just great like that. <laughs> He had a long day today. We did a lot today. The Frisbee has been interesting. Yeah, his Frisbee were a little plateaued. I mean, for George, you know, uh, over the last 24 hours, we kind of haven't moved too much farther, but his multiples are getting better, which is exciting to me. And I mean, he's just having a blast, a really good time. We need to probably start getting serious about his adoption, but we'll talk more about that tomorrow. I guess so, yeah. Mm -hmm. I have a, the more I get to know George, First of all, the more I love him, and props to all you foster people mm -hmm. who do this all the time, because honestly, I kind of want to keep George, but we can't. <laughs> it's okay, we're not, hi Andy, I know. Andy would be okay not keeping George. <laughs> the more that I get to know George, the more particular I kind of feel about the like perfect adopter that I have in mind for him. And I know that's definitely not the right way to go. So I'm getting a little worried because I really want him to go to a home that wants to like actively train him and interact with him every day because he's got so much cool potential. I would love to see him realize. Um, yeah, he's a dog trainer's dream for yep. sure. But I sure hope that I don't stand in my own way with this adoption process because honestly, I have no idea what I'm doing. But overall, I feel really good about his progress. I hope I can teach him more. The thing with him is knowing where to stop so he recovers and so you don't burn him out. Yeah, he's, he's doing great. So fingers crossed it all continues. We definitely have some more challenging times ahead with George. In the meantime, get a free Bark Box, Super Chewer Box, or both when you sign up for a multi-month plan at BarkBox.com slash dog training and SuperChewer.com slash dog training. If you're working on teaching your dog, you'll definitely like both of my books too. We'll see you in the next episode, unless you follow us on Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook. Then we'll see you in the meantime over there. Later. Good boy, very good. <laughs>